welcome to the real <laughs> at home. You guys, this is my favorite part of the day. It is girl chat. Are you guys ready to dive right in? Yes. 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 Fit it okay. in. First up, oh, since the rise of COVID-19, there's unfortunately been a rise in awful, awful attacks and hate crimes against Asian Americans. It's been reported that Asian American children as young as two as well as the elderly have been targeted uh, with these attacks and they aren't getting the coverage and the attention that they deserve. CNN did, however, offer up some ways to help combat this, uh, such as not resharing memes or jokes, uh, using proper terminology when you discuss the virus and demanding elected officials that they would condemn racism. So, Jeannie, I know that there's actually an issue that you wanted to talk about. Uh, how have things been for you? Um, I'm glad we're talking about this because I love that our show is always going to bring to light all the injustice and all the racism that takes place. It's, it's hard to keep up with all the news every single day. And so even though I recognize that we live in a society where racism is rampant, obviously I know the Asian community isn't the only one in pain, but just in the last few weeks, like you said, Aid, just experiencing directly some of these, these hateful acts have been very heartbreaking. Um, my dad um, faced a lot of hostility just on walks around his house. My makeup artist, Utsume, was attacked. My, I get death threats in my DMs and my emails. Um, people, what are they saying? Back, people recycle back articles about me, like literally, it, and it, it's literally targeting the word Chinese. Like if I have spoken about being Chinese, then they bring that back to, this is why this is your fault. So don't post these messages about what we should be doing or how we can be saving money when this is your fault. My, um, uh, my family friend actually went back to school, went to go get her books in her locker and was assaulted there, um, being blamed that the whole school was shut down because of her. And it's just, it, it, it's so hard to listen to this because there's a fear that has been placed on an entire race, because obviously we know that using the word Chinese flu is, the Chinese virus is not appropriate, nor making jokes like Kung flu and things like that. But right now we're so afraid and we're so unsure of, 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 of there's so much confusion around this, that I understand that people need a place to blame or they just feel better understanding of, of, of a source to blame. But when we call it that, we're placing all of this anger and confusion on an entire race of people. So it's just, it's crazy to see, for me, in, in, in my mind, um, two groups of people that are being attacked. One are the Asians and one are the Asians Amer Asian Americans, which are two completely different groups because one doesn't naturally, if I'm honest, they don't speak out for themselves and literally will either wipe the spit from their eyes or dry the blood from their face and don't say anything in their households. So it's accepting it and teaching the generations in their home to do that. And then the Asian Americans are doing their best to speak up and then I feel that sometimes it is hard because of, I, I think it might be the dialect, but I don't feel that all Asians also band together. At the same time, I, we've talked about this on the show many times on how important it is for us to put an end to finding any um, humor in this or obviously any inappropriate jokes and slander that's made. You know, we've talked about how if your friends are making these light-handed jokes and, you know, even me and Jay, of course, if we're posting something, we're always getting messages about like, oh, Jay, you gonna catch that corona? You're, you know, um, now you got both of them in your house. Like, what are you asking for? Like, and and it's so hard to have that conversation in, in Instagram comments. Like, I'm not about that because you just never win. If I'm going to have a conversation about it, it's either going to be in something I write or hear, you know, in an area where we want, we're going to talk about this as a whole to understand why it's wrong and how to place this confusion in, and, and what to think about, you know, our allies getting hurt or, or the racism that already exists and why we're adding to it. Like when I get out of this, I'm really excited to make eye contact with people again and not have to be afraid because of this added racism. So, uh, I have a question. Why do you think yeah. this isn't getting as much coverage as as it should? It actually is. I mean, in my world, right? So obviously, internet for me works on algorithms. So for me, every day I'm getting inundated with attacks by the hundreds in different areas. And then, of, of course, now you are also seeing headlines where there's Black and Black Americans getting attacked in Asia because of the racism on racism now. Because 
this group is afraid, so now they're blaming this group, and it's just compounding the already racism that exists. So, Tamara, I there's news a, everywhere about it. It, 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 okay. um, I have what I it just needs to be spoken yeah, about more often. I have what I think could be a difficult question. You, you said about talking about it, and we've talked about this on the show before, where um, you've spoken about just wanting to be able to converse with people about why are they racist and right. um, why... You know, why do they feel this why way? Why do they have those thoughts? And I right. think, you know, I, I feel like that that concept, you know, I've always felt like that for Black Americans, that's just not a burden that we need to carry upon ourselves. Do you still feel that way now that the attacks are far more real, they're in the reality base versus like, you know, <clears throat> theoretical at the time of our previous conversation? Yeah, that's a great question, Amanda, because I really, I felt that conversation with you. And I heard and felt your anguish with, that's not my job to teach you what you should know. Like that's, I'm, I'm done with that. I, I feel that too. And that's why, you know, for me, everybody's going to treat the anger differently. I do think for some reason, I process better when I just understand why a person feels that way. I don't agree with it, but if I just understand where it came from, then I'm able to just connect with the person or the idea on a direct level. You know, because if you just don't like a person because of their color of skin, we all know what that is already. That's like, that's not even in my level to talk about. Like, well, you I know, can't. for me, this whole thing, this is for me, this is two different things. Number one, we have the whole situation with how COVID was introduced to us and to the nation. And mm -hmm. um, there were some of our leaders who said, hey, it's leaders, the Chinese yeah. virus and things like that. So that right. makes, fear makes people point the finger. But then there's an underlining issue that we don't tend to discuss, which is, a, a, I believe, a miscommunication or misconceptions between the Asian communities and black and brown communities, and even the, to majority, because Asians tend to be in our communities, but then they're segregated back to their neighborhoods. So we only see a lot of Asians when we go to beauty supplies or to the nail shops, but we don't have a community. And so I think until we really seriously sit down and have um, community events, remember we used to have block parties in New York and, yeah. you know, we used to have community events in Detroit where everybody in the community would come together so we could get to know each other and get to understand each other's culture. Um, yeah. But I, there's an underlining thing that's happening that we're not discussing. And until we actually try to come together and understand each other's cultures, you know, in a way, Jeannie, you and Jeezy are kind of becoming a symbol of when you put two cultures together, what happens um, right. with that. But until we have those conversations about, you know, the differences between Asian um, cultures and black and brown cultures, you're still going to have these misconceptions that when you have a virus, not everybody mad at y'all. I actually saw something on Amanda's Instagram. And Amanda, if you could help me explain this. Um, I think it's important, like Lonnie just briefly touched on right now about elected officials um, speaking up and condemning racism. They were actually saying that they wanted to test uh, the vaccine for this virus on Africans. And what was the the the, the conglomerate it was two that French? It was two French physicians that were having a public conversation on television where they felt like uh, the best place to test this this um, virus was on the continent because they said that they don't have the same restrictions and protective gear. I don't know. They came up with some alarm. And who, who was the person that spoke out against it? It was the head of some, that big company. The head company, of the World Health that, Organization. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. The head of the Health World Organization. The WHO. There we go. Literally spoke out. And when you watched what he said, it was on Amanda's Instagram. He literally said, we condemn any sort of racial, um, of any kind of racism in general. And if you guys can speak on this, Jeannie, if you want to tap on this, would it make you feel better if we had elected officials speaking out and saying, yo, this is wrong, do on not that. do this? I need so, to tap anyway. on that. And I'm going to tell you why I need to tap on that. We live in a nation that still has not formally apologized for slavery. Mm -hmm. So... We have to acknowledge that this is not a this is not a country that has ever truly even acknowledged the racism that it's already practiced. And by the way, we're not even discussing the other groups that have been affected by this. Like, have we? I, I haven't seen any. 
I haven't seen every any coverage on how COVID-19 is affecting the immigrant children at the border who have been at the border in cages, et cetera. In cages. So, so when I when I hear about like, do we need to have elected officials condemn racism? It's like we still have elected officials that are making Confederate holidays, okay? That still want to have Confederate flags up. So it seems very disingenuous. Let's say white supremacists are It seems are very fine disingenuous people. to all of a sudden now be like, oh, by the way, we condemn racism because what it feels like is it's we only condemn racism against this particular group. Yes. And yes. for this particular reason. And the yes. reality, though, in my opinion, this is really a time where I think a lot of different ethnic and racial groups who suffer racism do not see their struggle in other groups. Yeah. And so when other groups are feeling these same issues and oppressions and discriminations and assaults on a regular basis, they come up with reasons why that's them and it's not us. Yeah. But any day and any time, we don't know Always. the circumstances, it can flip because that's the way this world has unfortunately been operating for so long. So I think that this is a time where we need to have a higher level of compassion and awareness for the fact that all people of color are affected by racism in various ways that at any time can be deleterious to them in the same way it has been to other groups that they have previously shunned. Yes. And this is the thing, yes. when we speak about this, like what we're speaking about now, just because maybe a man that speaks, you know, t t t through the black point of view, you as a viewer should still understand that can affect you. you yes. but, but the minute yes. she says black or the minute this, the minute uh, Munchkin says a Hispanic, everybody wants to, oh, that don't, that's not me. No, no. It, no, it, no it, it's, it's, we're only speaking from our experience and from our perspective because that's the race that we are. But if tomorrow, God forbid, it was like an attack on people from Poland it could be your group. Like it, it, it you have. We have to look at each other as human. And once upon and a time, it was an attack on people in Poland. The Holocaust. Uh, right. Look exactly. Completely. Exactly. So and again, I want to touch on what Lonnie said. That. Yes. And I want to touch on what Lonnie said. Um, you're right. I love that you brought up underlying conversations that are not being had that should be had, and this is bringing it to light. Um, Jay and my relationship is clearly just an example of of our own individual lives. We are not telling the story for everybody else's experience, right? So we're not responsible for that. But what we do need to respect is each other's cultures and what we're learning about it together, like we should be in the world, right? If I sit down with Adrian, if I go to your house and I experience what your family does, that's your family and what you guys do. And I might get some cultural ideas from that. But at the same time, we're just teaching each other and influencing each other. So that does need to happen more so in the world of allies, right? If you you should have friends of different races, first off. I always say, if you look at your circle of friends and they're all one color, something's going wrong because that's not what the world looks like. So you're only getting one linear experience. And the second thing that is the underlying conversation is what I wanna have with Asians, my, my people out there, no matter what race you are, stand up for one another. It doesn't just mean if you're just Japanese, stick for Japanese. If you're Asian, stick up for Asians. And as a person in this community, in this world, stick up for everybody else who faces yes. the type of hurt and yes. pain that we're getting now.